All right, hey guys, and welcome back, or welcome if you're new here. Now, before we even get into today's video, I need to talk to you guys. So you may or may not have noticed, but I missed last Wednesday's video, and that's because school started. It's terrible, I can't stand it. The whole situation is terrible. I hate high school. But I can make like a 20 minute rant video about that. I'm not gonna get into that today, but it's just taken up so much of my time. which I can't stand, but there's nothing I can do about it. It is what it is. So I'm gonna try my absolute best. We're gonna keep up with the upload schedule still every Sunday and every Wednesday at noon Pacific Standard Time, which is three Eastern Standard Time. You can convert it to whatever time, whatever. But I'm gonna change those videos up a little bit. So every Wednesday, it's gonna be like a five to six minute video, a shorter video, maybe something aimed more towards beginners, something like that. That's a little bit of a shorter video. And then every Sunday will be a full 10 minute video like normal. I just don't have the crazy amount of time that I used to have in the summer to make all the stuff, I'm trying to keep up with all my animals, the fish, everything. It's just a lot more work now that school's here, taking up all my time. Now regardless of that, I am back for today's video. So today I'm gonna do a little bit of an unboxing from Algae Barn. Algae Barn's a company, I've done stuff with them before. It's basically a saltwater aquarium company. They sell a whole bunch of stuff, inverts, fish, uh, copepods, all kind of stuff like that. And they hosted a big giveaway, which I won like third or fourth place. So I got a little like prize package of Algae Barn stuff. So I went ahead and filmed it and filmed me adding it to my saltwater aquarium. And I also went ahead and did a big update on my saltwater tank because things have been changing. Weird stuff's been going on in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw you over to when I unbox that. So here is the box. As you can see, it's a pretty fancy box. It's got the logo all over it, it's good to go. Right on top, there's some information right here. That's actually nice that they include kind of all the information right in the box flaps. That's another cool addition. And then in here, it looks like we have everything all wrapped up in this little temperature controlled bag. Got a little thing for Aquashella. There's Coral Fish 12G. And then there's also a Swedish fish and an algae barn sticker. But now for the important stuff in this weird bag thing. Right on top we have a heat pack or a cold pack, some pack. And then in here we have the item. So I got, uh, I believe it was sea lettuce macroalgae, which is gonna be right here. Yeah, that's sea lettuce. So this is just like a refugium algae, which is like a good algae for your aquarium, like something you want. And then these right here are copepods. So I don't know if you can see, but you see those little bugs in there? They look like tiny little white dots. Those are actually live bugs that kind of live in your aquarium and they're very, very beneficial. So in the reef tank, things have really been going down. The corals are getting nice and thick. And the fish are all doing really well. Even the starfish down there is thriving. We're due for a water change on this tank. I do it every other Tuesday and that is coming up very, very soon. Anyway, we're gonna do a water change on Tuesday, but that's besides the point. Here's where stuff's been going down. This is my anemone. Now, if you remember, my anemone used to be huge. It used to take up like this whole top rock. Like it was a massive anemone. And um, it turned into two anemones. What? So it basically split in half. It was a big anemone and now it's split into two anemones. So like that's kind of weird. Didn't even really know that was gonna happen. Just, it just happened in like an hour. Like it was like one anemone like two hours ago and now it's two anemones. So that's pretty whack, but the rest of the tank is doing really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and start acclimating these pods. I'm gonna go ahead and stick them back in my sump to go ahead and get used to the temperature. And then as for the sea lettuce, they kind of like rocky areas to kind of grow on. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and put this refugium light over here. And now right here in my refugium, we have the perfect growing spot for this sea lettuce. This stuff smells so bad, by the way. Oh my God, it smells terrible. But I'm just gonna go ahead and lift this piece of glass up there, I'm just gonna go ahead and push this down there and basically that will live in the refugium and do helpful stuff and absorb nitrate and stuff like that. So this algae is just gonna go ahead and live down here and then we'll add the pods once they're acclimated. A little longer than a few minutes later. These guys have been acclimating for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and grab them out really fast. And now I think I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of them in the sump and some of them in the main display. Just crack this open and I'm gonna dump a few in here. And then the rest are gonna go throughout the sump. Okay, so we are back outside. Now that you saw the saltwater tank, got some updates on the tank inside, I'm gonna go ahead and throw you to when I went to PetSmart and Petco. I was just there a few days ago. I went ahead and filmed some stuff there. I had to go pick up some stuff. So I went ahead and filmed that, obviously. I'm gonna go ahead and throw you to that footage now. Now I'm at PetSmart over here. Now the only reason I'm here is because I need to see if they have koi food on sale because I'm running out of koi fish food. 
And I think they have it on sale here, so I'm gonna go ahead and run in there, check it out, show you guys some of the fish. Probably not gonna buy any fish. Maybe we'll buy some fish. You never know, it's PetSmart. Let's go see what they have. So I'm back, their koi food was not on sale, so that was kind of annoying. They just had like basic koi food, nothing really fancy, but it was all very expensive, like $35 for a bag of Hikari food, no thanks. But we did get 12 feeder minnows, I like to go ahead and stock up on these, they do great in the pond, they help keep the pond clean, who was right there? Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed 12 of them, we'll go ahead and put those in the pond when we get home. And now, do I even have to say it? I'm at Petco. I come to Petco in every video, but I'm here to now get koi food for real. So I'm obviously back from Petco in the car, and their saltwater fish, oh, they had some nice ones. They had a tamani tang, that guy was really, really cool, I've never seen that guy before, but he was dope, he looked healthy. He only gets six inches, which is way smaller than myself in tang. Kinda want one, probably can't fit it in my tank. We're just gonna have to hold off on that one. They also had a baby self in tang, he was looking nice and cool. And then they also had your basic freshwater fish. But I got what I came for, some Hikari koi food. Now we can go ahead and go home. I put the minnows in here and let them acclimate. They're right here in this bag. And what I'm gonna do is put a few in this little breeder tub and a few in this box, which is now covered in shrimp. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of quarantine these fish just because I don't want them to pass any crazy disease onto the koi. I just wanna make sure they're ick free and they're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically just put some in each of these containers and let them sit for a little bit to make sure they're healthy, nothing crazy. So it is about like four days since you saw that last clip of me actually putting the feeder minnows in like the little quarantine tank, which by the way, there was just shrimp in there. So if they had a disease, it like couldn't transfer to the other fish because there weren't any other fish. But I went ahead and moved them into the pond last night so I couldn't film it because it was too dark. But they're all doing really, really good. You can kind of see them scurrying around down there. And I'm pretty sure they're also doing good and they're all in here. By the way, quick update, plants are doing good. These elephant ears are doing amazing. As you can see, they've perked up so much and they're really thriving in here. The water lilies are just doing okay. And then these guys are also doing fine as well. Obviously the koi are all doing good. And then here is my monster pleco. I haven't seen this guy in a while because he only comes out kind of at evening, but he is doing amazing. He's nice and big. There's this big pleco in here and there's also a bristlenose pleco that I just saw a few days ago. So there's a full grown bristlenose pleco and then there's this guy in here. But that's a quick update on the koi pond. It's doing really, really good. Now we have the ducks. So things have gotten a little bit different here. You remember we still have their water right here, their feeder right there, their feeder has been working great. Their oyster shell feeder right here, which has also been doing fine. Uh, their water gets super dirty. I have to change that water like twice a day. It's kind of annoying. But this right here is something new. So the ducks have learned to fly. And apparently the ducks don't really like being back on the side yard all day. So every single morning I let the ducks out of their coop. They stay in here at night. And I let them out and they have this whole area back here during the day. They have their pool over there. Nice little duck chill spot. The reason they stay back there is because I don't want them messing up my pond during the day when I'm not here. And then when I'm home or when I'm in the backyard, I'll let them out and let them run around the yard a couple times a day. But they didn't like that. That wasn't good enough for them. I would come out here a few times and the ducks would just be in the backyard. They learned to hop over this fence with ease. I've watched them do it. Both the ducks can just jump right over this fence. So I had to put up a taller one which they have not gone over yet. But other than trying to escape, the ducks are doing really good. I still get attacked by them all the time. In fact, I'm gonna be out here for a little bit, so I went ahead and brought the ducks outside just to go ahead and get some free ranging time. Don't bite me, don't you dare. Don't you dare do that. Stop chasing me! Stop chasing me! Don't, don't do it. Ow! Stop it, stop. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. The ducks are finally gonna leave me alone for a little bit. That is it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good.